let's bow again in brief prayer. Dear God, we ask very simply the words of my mouth and the meditations of our heart may find acceptance in your sight. Amen. Just checking my watch because I want to keep the promise that you find in the bulletin that we uh, will end on time, which will enable us to uh, remain for the post loop. So, what I'm about to say, I've said a few times this week. When we have a service on Tuesday, like Trinity on Tuesday, and have services uh, at the retirement homes and at Broadview, and a service like at Wednesday for Ash Wednesday, we use the same scripture each time. We use a scripture that are, that's intended for the following Sunday, which means, in theory, the reflections at each place should be pretty much the same or similar. This week, however, every time we looked at the gospel, the reflection changed. Until, I think, Wednesday night, when we uh, uh, settled on something that might make sense. So I spent the week overthinking the gospel. It seemed puzzling in some respects, and the understanding of it calls for speculation. It's not clear uh, what Jesus is referring to when he speaks of the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices, and it's not clear what is meant by the uh, tire tower of Siloam falling on uh, the 18 people in Jerusalem. We do know that the gospel today starts in a very dark place. At that very time, there were some present who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. So something had happened at or about that time, or something had happened at least that so affected the people of Judea that they were still talking about it. And this thing, this event, caused Pilate to believe it was appropriate to mingle the blood of a number of Galileans with his sacrifice. Now this kind of act is immeasurably offensive. And Pilate would knew that, would know that. So his act was intentional. Pilate is Rome's representative. Rome is an occupying power. Judea is occupied quite unhappily. And as with any imperial occupation, Pilate and the power of Rome are constantly under threat of insurgency. And any and all manifestations of active resistance must be crushed in such a way that others see clearly the consequence of opposing Rome. Pilate's act of mingling the blood of the, these Galileans with that of his sacrifice is clearly intended to strike fear and anxiety in the hearts of the population. The message is cruel and unambiguous. Do not mess with Rome. Now Jesus traveled it with his circles with zealots and people who were likewise unhappy with Rome. They formed a part of the band of people interested in what this carpenter turned preacher had to say about liberation from their oppressor. 
So Jesus cautions his friends to be wise in their approach to the seemingly limitless power and cruelty of Rome. Now Jesus says something else. Jesus doesn't just say, stop, or this indignity will be yours. He tells a parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, See here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? The parable begins with a tone of fruitlessness and frustration, of emptiness and helplessness. The tree is barren and in real danger of destruction. Much like the Galileans, whose blood Pilate mingled with his sacrifice, or the 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them. However, Jesus moves from this threat of elimination to a story of Sabbath, of refreshment, and of restoration. The gardener replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. In the context of fruitlessness and anxiety, Jesus speaks of restoration. Jesus is calling his followers from a season of despair to a season of refreshment. This year of tending, of nourishment, of special attention by the gardener is a Sabbath year. Today is the first Sunday in Lent. Now Lent may be viewed by some as a time of repentance and penance. There are some who view Lent as a time of darkness as we successively extinguish candles uh, on our journey to Monday, Thursday and Good Friday. Lent, for some, seems to be a season where we are called to reflect on loss. However, perhaps Jesus is calling us to a different view this morning. Rather than a loss of light and growing dread of darkness, let us consider ways in which we can extinguish or set aside the soul-eroding distractions of anxiety, fear, and loss, and enter a Sabbath time in which we can find restoration. Let us consider ways that we can receive restoration at the hands of the faithful gardener. And let us consider ways that the faithful gardener can use us as instruments of refreshment for others. A Trinity has a variety of Sabbath times. Advent is a Sabbath of expectation. July and August is used in our congregation as a Sabbath of recreation. How else do we create a space for little Sabbaths? The UCW is very good at balancing labor and refreshment. Healing Pathway provides a Sabbath experience. 
our monthly men's breakfast is a little Sabbath. Rainbow Sabbath is a time intended to be free, easy, and safe. Our daily Lenten prayers that uh, Norma copied for this year are brilliant in their simplicity. Each prayer is easy and restorative. And I encourage you still, if you haven't already picked one up, you can find them at our table in the back with our, uh, our guest book. Family Fridays are intended to be stress-free. While there may be a program prepared, no one is a slave to it. No one fails if families and children have fun and refreshment in some way that falls out of the uh, prepared script. This Thursday, we're going to celebrate Pi Day. Now, it is true that for some, the journey during our exploration of a firm included labor, setting up workshops, the stress of anticipating questions and concerns. It is true that some may have had a sense that opening up the question would stir people up when we are already inclusive. It is also true that we have an opportunity during Lent to be called from labor to refreshment, even with respect to a firm, in getting together for something that is literally as easy as pie. The whole United Church has just gone through a reorganization. It was stressful and was initiated from a place of anxiety concerning a need for a sustainable future. And Trinity will be part of the beginning of renewal and refreshment as we prepare to host the inaugural meeting of the Eastern Ontario Utoe Regional Council in June. How else do we create Little Sabbaths? Perhaps a monthly games afternoon or evening, a movie night, a social night, a snack potluck. At that very time, there were some present who told them about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. There are many significant and small ways to be anxious, to be overburdened, to be preoccupied. Lent gives us a season to step out of our worries and into God's grace. Lent gives us a season to turn from labor to refreshment. Let us receive this rest. And as we are able, let us consider ways that we can be a rest, that we can be refreshed and refreshment that we can be restored and restoration for others let us enter this Lenten journey as we would enter a season of Sabbath and find there God's grace manifest in the hands of a gardener, restoring one another's souls and finding rest. Amen.